Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessings to you on this first Sunday of Advent.
Please join me in our call to celebrate. Can one be homesick for something you've never known? We are homesick for a just world, for peace like rivers, for the end of suffering. Yes, we are homesick for joy that is contagious, for nations that feel like neighbors, and for hospitals that run empty. We are homesick for the world God promises. We are homesick, but we are on our way. God is here. God is still creating. Let us worship Holy God.
Please join me in this morning's opening prayer. God of the stars and God of our hearts, our days will pass, but your words will last. The earth might fade, but your words will last. Our memories might blur, but your words will last. The grass will wither, but your words will last. The sky could go dark and your words would last. So as we listen today, help us to hold on to what will last. Help us to hold on to you. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Today we celebrate the first week of Advent as we look towards hope. The poet Emily Dickinson wrote, Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. The psalmist declared, I put my hope in you all day long. Hope is more than wishful thinking. Hope is rooted in trust and dares to imagine what we cannot. A time when the Spirit of God dwells vividly among us like a candle in the darkness. Hope reminds us we are never alone. Hope is our active commitment to be God's faithful people, whether we walk an easy path or face fiery trials. When we light the candle of hope, we embrace God's presence among us yesterday and today and always. Let us pray. Whatever we face in life, we will do our best to put our hope in God. Amen. Our first reading for today is taken from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 16, the righteous branch and the covenant with David. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is Our Righteousness. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36 the coming of the Son of Man. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And the lesson of the fig tree. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And the exhortation to watch. Be on guards so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. 
for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Word of the Lord. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm wondering, for those of you that are at home, just out of curiosity, how many times have all of you moved? Did you move as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, as an adult? Once, twice, three, four, five or more times? My guess is that all of you, no matter how you answered, have moved at least once in your life, and you know how disorienting moves can be. I never moved as a child. In fact, my parents still live in the same house that I grew up in out in Greenbush. But when I was in college and in graduate school, I started moving from apartment to apartment. And every time I moved in college and grad school, I had classmates, I had friends. I had people that were neighbors in the building close by that I knew. So there was always something familiar about the places that I moved. And those people always made it feel like home. Until I moved to Kiel. It was the first time that I moved and I knew I wasn't home. We moved from Kiel. We moved from the city of Chicago to Kiel. And soon after we moved, I realized that I was homesick for the sound of the L, of car alarms in the middle of the night, of people walking up and down the streets. And here I was with my husband in a small town, and we knew no one. The air and the streets around us were eerily quiet after dark. And I think I've told this story before in the service, but there was one day in Kiel, about a week after we had moved there, that I got lost in Kiel, of all places, trying to go to the bank. And I remember pulling aside the car into a park that I had never seen before, and I wept because I was homesick. I didn't feel like I belonged, and I felt like an imposter in this small town. Eventually, Kiel became my home. And then we moved to Grafton. And the old ache of homesickness that I thought was gone forever after I got acclimated to Kiel appeared again like an old friend. It happened again the first night we were in our home. I don't think I've told anyone this, but there were mattresses laying on all of our bedroom floors because half of our old home was still in storage somewhere. And the other half was vomited all over this strange house. And that night that I went to bed, I realized that the house smelled weird. It didn't smell like home. It sounded weird. It didn't sound like home. And I didn't sleep that night because I felt like I had invaded someone else's space. I felt like an imposter in this house and I wanted to go home. I wanted to go back to Kiel because I didn't belong. I didn't feel right because I was homesick. I've thought a lot about that feeling of homesickness this week, about how hard it is to describe that feeling, describe its exact feeling in our hearts. Because there's fear woven into it. But there's also this sense of longing, but there's a strange sense of dis-ease and disorientation as well. And the most overwhelming part for me about homesickness is this kind of intuitive understanding that 
it will never be the same as it once was. That somehow the home that we have known is gone. And I'm not sure how you've experienced homesickness, but this is how it has been for me. And I know that it's very hard to describe, but when I say the word homesick, my guess is that all of you know that feeling that I'm talking about. And like I said, I was reminded of homesickness a lot this week as I listened to the reports coming out of Waukesha. Now, I've never lived in Waukesha. I've only been there a handful of times. But I have friends and families that live in that area. And I checked in on them to make sure that they were okay, that at least their bodies were okay, their souls not so much. And I held in, my, in prayer my clergy colleagues and my friends who are pastors in that city. And I trembled and I wept like many of you and oddly enough, in those moments, I felt homesickness creep in again. I'm wondering if you did too. Did you pause and think back to a time and a place that felt familiar and comfortable? Were you surrounded by smells that were normal, of places that felt safe? Because I did. I did, especially as the disorienting news of Sunday hit me. It was heartbreaking. And I think in some ways it called us to remember and cling to a world we thought we knew, where people could go to a Christmas parade, walk in it, and feel safe. And now, everything is different. And we hear these words from Christ in the Gospel of Luke almost as a condemnation of signs and the sun and the moon and the stars, of people confused by the rolling of the sea, of people trembling because they are afraid of what is to come. These people are homesick. They're homesick for a world they thought existed. But this passage from Luke isn't a condemnation, not at all. Instead, I think it's one of the most hopeful statements for us to hear this morning. Jesus says in the midst of all of this turmoil, in the midst of all of this homesickness, stand up. That's it. It's what he says at the end of the passage. Stand up. And I can almost hear those voices of people that I have known throughout the course of my life who, in moments, would look at me, look at us, tell us to stop it, stand up, quit feeling sorry for yourselves, and do something. Stand up and do something. Hang the pictures, wash the floors, buy the toilet paper, dress, dust the drawers, vacuum the carpets, lay the sheets, make the beds, fill the cabinets, lay the rugs on the floors, put chairs around that table, make a pot of tea, make a pot of coffee, throw a pizza in the oven, eat dinner, you know, stand up and start making this place a home because homes are not. Appear, they do not appear out of anywhere. Instead, they have to be created. Create a place that is safe. Create a place that is comfortable. Create that place you stand for. Stand up and know that home is not far off. Remember those wilderness seasons when you were homesick? Longing for a place and a world that you knew could no longer exist? Surely that's what you watched your parents do when you moved in your childhood. Surely that is what you did as you embarked on this world for your first adventure. Surely that is what you do every time you walk into a new place holding memories of what once was. You stood up and you allowed your homesickness to be overwhelmed by hope. This is what we do each Advent, friends. We hold intention the world we knew, the world we thought existed. 
and we let the old comfortable ache fill our hearts. We stand up, we pack our homesickness away, and we pre prepare to make a home again in this place. We prepare to make a place, a home in this world every year that is new, that is different. As we look around this world, as we consider the events of this past week, of this past month, of this past year, and as we feel homesickness bubble up in our hearts again, we hear the Spirit invite us to stand up. And when we do, to fill our walls with love. To hang photos of the world we know is coming of the world that we hope for our children, to fill this space with the scent of memories, of baking bread, of cookies, the smell of comfort, to listen for the sound of laughter floating through our living room windows, to the comfort of a place where we know safety, the warmth of the fire of grace, because at this point in time, as we begin this Advent, Christ urges us to stand up and build this home. Give name to this place where love is made known, where grace is alive, where peace is a language we speak, where none of us, none of our children are homesick. Where we can go to parades and we can live in the world. Because we have found, you no. Know, we have created that resting place where all of us belong. Blessings to you on this Advent season. So may it be. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, we gather our prayers together. Even though we are apart, some of us, please remember that our gathered prayers are lifted together through the sacred space of the sanctuary and our homes. That we, all of us who are homesick for a world that once was, are still bound together by the presence of God. So all of you who are gathered this morning, please join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, we long for a place that is comfortable, that is known. We long for a place that we feel secure, where things are expected, where there are no surprises. We are afraid that we do not live in this world anymore, and we are scared to make our home here. Especially as we enter this season of Advent, we are tired of waiting, we are worn down by the weight of uncertainty, and we just want to take root and make a place in this world and call it home. Help us to remember as we make our way through this world that you are our resting place, that you are and always will be our home. So today we offer prayers for all of those who search for a home. We offer prayers for all of those that are housing insecure. We offer prayers for all of those that are in the in-between seasons between surgery and recovery, between therapy and diagnosis. 
We pray for all of those that continue to struggle with chronic conditions, remembering days when their bodies didn't ache, when their minds were sharp, and when their feet were steadfast. Give us eyes and ears to hear and to see that in all of our days and in all of our seasons, in all of our bodies, your spirit beats with our hearts, that we are indeed home, that we are counted among your beloved. And we wait for that day with great hope as we cling to the words that Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, as we move through this service, I want to remind all of you that received this service in an email to hop back to the email because we have a number of announcements. And this morning, I would like to welcome any of you that are worshiping with us for the first time. We think that Advent is a great time to find us, so we're, we are glad that you're here with us this morning, and we hope that you had a very safe and blessed holiday week, and that you were able to break bread with people that you know and love. And as always, I want to express gratitude for the ways that you have continued to give gifts to this congregation, to this ministry, and to this world. Surely you, people of Pilgrim, have been a blessing to each other and a blessing to this world. So as you consider giving a gift this morning, I'd like to remind you that you can hop onto our website and donate online. Or, if you prefer, you can send a check to the church and we will account for that gift here. And remember that each and every day, your life is your gift. So as we prepare to give these gifts, I'd like to invite us to share the peace of Christ with one another. And now let us pray as we dedicate our gifts. Holy God, we are homesick. We long for the day that you spoke of when swords would be beaten into plowshares, when the lion will lie down with the lamb and justice will roll like waters. Until that holy day comes, 
Take these gifts and use them to build that world here. We are hopeful. Amen. Dear friends, as you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcomed. So come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God's Spirit, God's Son, God creator, go in peace. Amen.